Naming complex ions and coordination compounds is going to be the topic of this lesson. My name is Chad, and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. Now, in addition to high school and college science prep, we also offer DAT, MCAT, and OAT prep as well. I'll leave a link in the description below for where you can find those courses. Now, this lesson is part of my new general chemistry playlist, which is almost finished. But for a couple more weeks, I'll still be releasing several lessons a week throughout the school year, and I'll be starting a new playlist shortly thereafter. So if you want to be notified every time I post a new lesson or get started on my next playlist, then subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, so naming complex ions and coordination compounds. And uh, we're going to split this up into cations and anions, and technically we're going to name both cations and neutral complexes in one way. So it's typically when you name the metal part of it, but with the anions we're going to do it slightly different for certain examples, for certain metals, as we'll see. So we'll start with a complex cation here, and so we try to make this as confusing as possible, just so you know. And in the formula, we put the metal first and the ligand second, but in the name, we put the ligands first and the metal at the end of that complex ion. So again, just trying to make it confusing is my guess. So we're going to name the ligands first. You know, it turns out you name the ligands, you name them in alphabetical order based on how they're named. So again, water is not named as water, it's named as aqua. Ammonia is not named as ammonia, it's named as amine. And then Cl is chloro, turns out. And we'll name them in alphabetical order. So in this case, amine is going to come first, Am, then aqua, Aq, and then chloro, Ch, after that. So turns out you're also going to use a numerical prefix to tell you, uh, to tell me exactly how many there are. So two is for di. 3 for tri, 4 for tetra, 5 for penta, 6 for hexa. If there's only one though, you're just going to use no prefix whatsoever. You don't, you don't say mono or anything like that. You just leave the prefix off. And so for this first one here, so we got to start off again naming the amine first. We got three of them. So we're going to say tri amine. And if you've had organic chemistry, you'll notice that a lot of nitrogen containing compounds are called amines with only one M. So, but here in coordination chemistry, so as a ligand, amine has two M's in it. So just a word of the wise there. So triamine, we got three amine ligands. So, and then aqua is next in the alphabet. So we have two of those. So it's going to be di aqua, and then just the one chloro. So we're just going to say chloro. All right, and then once you've named all those ligands, you finally name the metal. And in this case, CR stands for chromium. So we're just going to say chromium. One big, long word. And then in parentheses, you're going to put the oxidation state of that uh, metal. And you might have to figure it out based on what it's with here. So you're going to have to know the charges on your ligands, unfortunately. Now, I can see that this entire complex ion has an overall charge of plus two. So, but you're supposed to know that aqua and amine have no overall charge, they're neutral, and then chloro is minus one. And so if there's just this one ligand that's minus one, well then we can deduce that the chromium must be plus three if the overall complex ion is gonna be plus two. And so you've gotta put the Roman numeral three in parentheses there. And so this is the triamine diaqua chloro chromium three ion. And so if you're only got just the cation, just the anion, well, you're going to say ion at the end. It's kind of like if you had Na+. What would you call this? Would you just call it sodium? No, you call it a sodium ion at the end of the name. So if you got just a cation or just an anion, say ion at the end. All right, so for cations and neutral species, this is kind of how it goes. What we'll see is just going to be a difference is that when you name the metal for a complex anion, you're always going to end it with an A-T-E ending. So had this overall had a negative charge for the entire complex, well then we would have said chromate. Now notice, I'm saying it's a negative charge for the entire complex. The metal itself is always, you know, is never going to be able to have a negative oxidation, uh, negative oxidation state. It's either going to be positive or in certain rare cases it might be neutral, but it's always going to be positive. But the key is, if the entire complex has an overall negative charge, like it does here, that's when you'd end it with an AT ending. We wouldn't have said chromium, we would have said chromate. So, and to make this even trickier again, uh, it turns out that for select metals, you're going to use the Latin root with the ATE ending as well. So if you notice, we get quite a few transition metals that the symbol does not correspond to the English name, like iron, Fe. Well, that doesn't match. So an Fe comes from the Latin fer. And so when you have a complex anion with iron, you don't say ironate, you say ferrate. And so there's certain ones you should know. And I put them on the handout here. So we've got uh, uh, Fe is uh, ferrate Cu. Notice copper is CO, but Cu is the symbol, and that's cupra. And so it'd be cuprate. So Ag, argentate. If you've 
spoken any French, you'll, you'll know that uh, l'argent is money or silver, you know? So uh, then you've got AU would be orate for gold, which we're going to use here, and then PB, plumbate. Uh, definitely lead doesn't uh, uh, begin with a PB, right? And then SN for stan, so which is uh, tin. So we'd say stanate. And again, this only applies to the complex anions. So if I have a complex cation and gold's a part of it, I'm just going to say gold. If uh, you know iron's a part of it, I'm just going to say iron. So it's only for the complex anions that I use these Latin roots with an A-T-E ending. All right, so in this case, uh, we're going to name the ligands first yet again. And so we got four chloro ligands, and four is tetra. So we're going to say tetra chloro. So, and then instead of gold here, because this has a negative charge, had it had a positive charge or neutral, we would have just said gold. But again, because it has an overall negative charge on this complex anion, we'll use orate, A-U-R-A-T-E. And then again, Roman numeral in parentheses, and chloro is minus one, so gold must overall be plus four if the, the entire complex ion has an overall negative two charge. And so we'll put the Roman numeral four here. So let's, let's get that right, not four. How did I get that? How about two? Plus two. So plus two and minus four here for a total of minus two. And so this is the tetrachloroorate two ion. Okay, so we got one other thing to, uh, to deal with here, and that's when you got like polydentate ligands, like we do here in this case. And so you got to know their names, unfortunately. So we're going to name this thing. So EN is the short for ethylene diamine. Like OFEN would be short for ophenanthrolene. And again, these are on that big list of ligands that are part of the study guide here. And so uh, oxalato would just be an OX in parentheses. And uh, diethylene triamine would be a D-I-E-N in parentheses and things of a sort. Uh, so you got to know these names, unfortunately, because when you go to name them, the entire name is part of the name, whereas just some little abbreviation is part of the formula. So we're going to name all of our polydentate ligands in this case first, or just ligands. And it's ethylene diamine, and there's three of them. Well, it turns out with polydentate ligands, you don't use the di, tri, tetra. You're going to use bis, tris, and tetrakis. Oddly enough, and since there's three of them, we're going to say tris, not tri. So you got to remember that that's from polydentate ligands, a little bit different numerical prefixes. So this is tris ethylene diamine. And notice diamine here just has one M, not two, as part of this big word ethylene diamine, oddly enough. So, and then we're going to go to naming the metal. And notice because we have a complex cation, we're not going to say ferrate here. We're just going to say iron. And then we got to put a Roman numeral in parentheses yet again. And in this case, you're supposed to know not only that ethylene is bidentate, ethylene diamine is bidentate, but that also it's neutral. It's no overall charge. And so in this case, the iron must be responsible for the entire plus two charge. Therefore, the Roman numeral two. And we're dealing with just an ion, not an entire compound here. And so this is tris ethylene diamine iron two ion. Okay, so now we're going to do a couple examples of entire coordination compounds where we have both cation and anion. So, and it's going to work just like we named other ionic compounds. You name the cation first, you name the anion second. So, and if they're simple, great. And if they're complex, well, now we've learned some new rules for naming them as complex ions and stuff, but we're going to have, be putting those together. So if we got like, you know, Na plus, that's the sodium ion. If we got Cl minus, that's the chloride ion. But if we got NaCl, that's now sodium chloride, an entire ionic compound. And that's kind of where we're headed with this, with entire coordination compounds where we have both cation and anion. And at least one of them is going to be complex in this chapter. But in the last example, we'll see where we have both a complex cation and a complex anion. Let's take a look. So just a second ago, we named this lovely complex cation, and it was the triamine diaqua chlorochromium three ion, since chromium was in the plus three oxidation state. And now we're going to make this cation part of an, an entire ionic compound as well. And so and in this case, we're going to get rid of that plus two charge and just put a couple of chloride counter ions here, overall neutral ionic compound now. And so when you name an ionic compound, you're still going to start cation first, anion second. So we're going to name the cation first, but since it's not just a cation by itself, we'll take away that ion. And so once you've said the entire cation, then you're just going to name the anion. In this case, it's just a simple anion. And we're just going to say chloride. Notice it's not dichloride or anything like that. Notice if we have NaCl versus 
MgCl2. This is sodium chloride. This is magnesium chloride. So, and how many chlorides there are is just implied by knowing the charges on the cations and knowing chloride's charge. So we don't say dichloride or anything like that. For just a simple anion here, it's just plain old chloride, even though there's two of them. And just a minute ago, we also named this lovely complex anion as tetrachloroorate 2 ion. But again, instead of having it as just a standalone anion here, we're gonna make it part of a coordination compound here. So we have both cation and anion now, a neutral compound. And in this case then, we don't put ion on the end. So, but this is the name of the anion. But again, with ionic compounds, we name cation first, anion second. So this is gonna go at the end of the name. So, and we just have to say the name of the cation. Well, this is just plain old sodium, just like we had, you know, NaCl, this would have been sodium chloride. Well, now this is just sodium tetrachloroorate 2. Two words. Cool, and again, the fact that there's two sodiums, totally irrelevant. So if we had Na2S, this would just be sodium sulfide, and notice the two doesn't become part of the name. It's just implied for ionic compounds based on you knowing the charges of cations and anions, how many there's gonna be in that balanced formula for a neutral compound. All right, in this last example, Instead of giving you the formula and asking for the name, now we're gonna give you the name and ask for the formula. And what's gonna make this one just a little bit challenging is both the cation and the anion are both complex ions. So, but as you'll find out, going from a, a name to the formula is actually a little bit easier, at least for an individual complex ion. Putting the two together will be a little bit challenging. So, hexaamine nickel two. Well, nickel's the metal ion, so that goes first in the formula. Hexaamine means there are six ammonias here, and then it's nickel two. And being nickel two, that means overall, it's gonna have a plus two charge since ammonia is neutral and nickel's plus two. All right, so then over here we got hexacyanoferrate and ferrate, that's iron. So we'll start off with Fe, and then hexacyano, that means there's six cyanoligands, and those are minus one each. You'll notice that all the negative uh, ligands, all the ligands that are negatively charged are always going to end with the letter O, like cyano, chloro, fluoro, so carbonato, oxalato, so on and so forth. So just a nice convenient way of remembering, you know, and notice aqua and amine don't end with an O and they're not negatively charged. So, but this is hexacyanoferrate 2, and in this case the cyanoligands are minus 1 each, so the iron here is plus 2, so overall this must have a minus 4 charge. And so just like with you've got simple cations and simple anions, you have to adjust the number of cations and anions to get an overall neutral compound. So if this is plus two and this is minus four, we don't have a neutral compound until we put a big fat two right there. And now we've got a neutral compound. So it'd just be the same as if you had something like NaS. Well, again, if you're gonna get the proper formula for sodium sulfide, you gotta realize that sodium's plus one, sulfide's minus two. These aren't gonna balance. You gotta, until you put the two right there, so that the, the cations and anions balance perfectly to a neutral compound. So that's the same kind of thing we did right here. We had to figure out the overall charge on the cation, overall charge on the complex anion, and then balance out the formula by putting a two subscript right here. But here's the overall formula for this lovely coordination compound. Now, if you found this lesson on naming complex ions helpful, then a like and a comment letting me know are pretty much the best things you can do to support the channel. Now, in the next lesson, we're gonna start going through isomers and it's gonna require your best mental focus. So if you need to grab a little coffee before joining me in that next lesson, then I'd highly recommend doing so. Happy studying.